David, always a great pleasure to see you. You're going to be a father again in June, I think. Yeah, you yeah, that's told right. Me that's, that's right. Uh, that's, uh, that's great. We tame these blokes beside me, aren't they? I mean, talking about when the bloke I respected the most was Valperovic. 37 cans in two hours. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Superhuman, that. <laughs> ah, there's always something to aspire to, David, isn't there? Um, <laughs> mate, you had a reputation as a pretty tough bloke on the footy field. You had your own reserve car spot at the AFL Tribunal down in Jollymont. <laughs> was, was it the nature, because I've known you for a long time and you're always just a good bloke to have a few beers and chat with, but you, know, you got on the field wearing a Carlton Guernsey and was there a sort of mental approach that you had that no one was going to get No, I did the same things wearing a Swans Guernsey. You know, there's no difference there. But I think, I think, and, and the Guernsey, you know, it is a Guernsey night and it's probably appropriate. You know, I was at the Swans and um, South Melbourne, then, then Sydney Swans uh, for five years and it was amazing. I mean, we'd get there and um, we'd, we'd play a game against Carlton, for example, and get beaten by six, seven points and put in a, a terrific effort, but um, we'd get beaten and we'd get cheered off the ground. Um, the first thing you noticed when you got to Carlton, I mean, you walk in, you see the pictures, there's a lot of pictures in the foyer out there tonight, and the, and the history and the players, the champion players who played there, and, um, and when you pulled the Guernsey on, you, you were expected to win. Uh, there was no, uh, that's good enough sort of thing. It was, um, you were expected, you pull that Guernsey on, and, and you come home a winner. And uh, so that was the ex expectation side of things, completely different to the Swans to South Melbourne. What about um, when you came over? Were you made welcome at Carlton? Did you feel like you were part of the team? Or was oh, it, look, was it I tough? mean, you had Jimmy Buckley and Wayne Johnson and a uh, <laughs> bloody bunch of al alcoholics here, really. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I fitted straight in. There was no problem there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, we, and we do, we laugh about guys like that. And, um, and they were that, though. But the one thing is, we'd go out and we'd enjoy ourselves, we'd have a good night, we'd get on the drink and, and muck up and whatever. I mean, if we were playing these days, half the team would be in jail. I mean, that's, um, <laughs> that's a sort of, the sort of era, <laughs> the sort of era we, we played in. But, um, well, you were out but the one thing was, the one thing was so. when, it, when, it come to, when it come to playing match days, all that was forgotten. I mean, all those guys, you know, had pride in their ability. So uh, they weren't going out um, half-hearted out in the football ground. You know, I mean, we enjoyed ourselves off the ground and uh, on the ground we had a dip. What was the best punch you ever got in, mate, in your career? Uh, geez, I, I didn't get many in. That was the worst thing about it. <laughs> Bloody all the buggers got me. But, um, but, you know, I mean, I didn't go out there to belt anyone. Know, never intentionally, but um, I had blokes trying to get me all the time, so I tried to get in first. I mean... <laughs> What a magnificent philosophy, David, and <laughs> may it continue. You talk about recovery, it's changed, hasn't it, David? Your idea of recovery was half a dozen Benson and Hedges and six stubbies, but <laughs> you go to these uh, places like uh, the Lexus Centre now where they've got the ice baths, which are six foot deep, and they plunge ice and then they get into this and all that. I mean, you've seen some significant changes in the way football is played, not only as a player but as a coach. Oh, definitely, definitely. I think there's a lot more information probably needed by players more, more so now than what, um, you know, I know from coaching. Um, and I think, um, you know, years ago you've seen the coaches who, who, who prepare. I mean, I was lucky enough to play under David Parkin and Robert Walls, who are probably the two most astute. I mean, my bag weighed a tonne from all the paperwork they used to throw on the bottom of, you know. But the, the amount of information they, they, they gave you on that and... Um, you know, I mean, probably to my own detriment, I, for a long time, didn't think I needed that information and um, thought I could get away with it myself. And, uh, but, you know, these days the, the, the guys out there playing really do need that information. And, and I think it goes back to what Rob was saying. I mean, you don't see kids walking down the street bouncing a footy anymore. I mean, when we grew up, that's what was happening. Kids were walking down the street bouncing a football. You look at Aboriginal players now and, and they're walking around the uh, Northern Territory bouncing a footy every day. You'll see them walking up and down the street and, um, and they've got that natural skill because of that. And um, yet a lot of uh, uh, city kids haven't got that same skill level because uh, they're not handling the football from a very young age all the way through. David, uh, hey, the pub's going well, mate? Going good, yes. How's it yes, surviving yes, without yes. you tonight? You're down here. Oh, uh, well, I'll get back there and... You'll get back there. Kick the, the trunks out. <laughs> 
I'll come back and have a couple with you. She'll be home by six. Um, <laughs> your career with Carlton, uh, quite remarkable given that you'd come from Sydney and weren't enjoying a lot of success there, but then go and be a Premiership player, a Norm Smith medalist, presented by Michael Tuck. And <laughs> <laughs> And a life member of the Carlton Football Club. Some advice. I suppose um, I, I look at, you know, I mean, you warm up before every game. You think you're going to win. Sometimes you're more confident than others. There was one game I played in I knew we were going to win, and that was the 1987 grand final. And um, the reasons, reasons I knew we were going to win that were... Um, we saw Motts today. Motts' horrific accident. I mean, any lesser man would have died um, in that car smash. And um, such as the fitness and, and tenacity of Motts to, you know, still be with us today, thank Christ. Um, Des English contracted cancer during the course of that year. Uh, Bernie Evans got a week in the second semi-final. We went out, and, and there was nothing written on the wall saying. You, um, you know, Mots, Desi, or, or Bernie. Nothing to do with. Nothing was said by uh, Wolsey, but each player knew in their heart they weren't just playing for himself. And quite often, I'll talk to football groups, and it, it amazes me. And, and quite often, you'll see it in the Olympics or, or wherever, where people pull that little bit extra out because of some sort of tragedy. I mean, we've all got it in us, so we've all got it there to, to you know, to be able to pull it out, and hopefully. Um, look, looking at the guys last week was fantastic, fantastic effort um, winning the Wizard Cup. But basically, I, I look at it as, you know, we're coming into the season proper. All we've had is probably the best preparation of all the 16 clubs going into the season. And um, as St Kilda did last year, and we saw that, you know, they, they went, to, you know, went from uh, left from the bottom up up to the top sort of thing. So I think it's uh, it's important that the guys do grasp their opportunity. Uh, it does only come once, and, and really get into it because um, pull that little bit extra out. Don't wait for something to happen for your dad to die or something you know could track cancer, whatever whatever happens. Get out and do it yourself because you have got it in you. And if you do pull that extra little bit out, you're not you're pulling the bloke beside you along, and you'll be a better team for it. David Reese Jones, Rod Ashton, Wow Jones, and Dean Rice, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for joining the council.